Hello everyone. If you are as big of a fan of the original Xbox as I am, then I have a treat for you today. Um, so you're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up XEMU, which is an Xbox emulator on PC. And um, I'm going to take you through the steps, um, the things you need to download. Most of them I can show you, some of them I cannot because, and this is kind of a, a disclaimer here, um, ROMs or the files needed to play games and also the BIOS files for Xbox or copyrighted material. So if you happen to have them, great. If you happen to be able to find them, great. But I cannot legally tell you where to find them. Now with that out, with that out of the way, what I can tell you is um, you're gonna need two pieces of software. And one of them is called Extract X ISO. And I will have this link um, down in the um, in the description, so you guys can just go straight to it and find it. And then you're gonna um, you're gonna click on X ISO release, and it's gonna download. I already have this downloaded, um, but this is where you find it. This one right here. This is the one that I downloaded. And then the second thing you're gonna need is the actual emulator itself. It's called X Emu, as you can see right here. <clears throat> now. Over here on the right, you click on that, you download it. Um, what, they all are downloaded as zip files, so you have to unpack them and make sure you know where you unpack everything because you're going to need to tell the emulator where um, everything is at that you need. So if you happen to download, for example, the BIOS, you need to make sure that, um, that you know where it's at so you can tell the emulator where it's at. So once you open up XEMU, this is not going to come up. It's going to say something to the effect of um, the display is, has not been initialized yet. And with that, you're going to go to the doo -doo -doo, not network system settings. And the reason I mentioned the BIOS files earlier, because you have to have the BIOS files. There's three files you have to have. There's the hard disk. Um, that's not that big of a deal. It's not copyrighted or anything. Um, but you, like I said, you have to know where it's at so that you can tell the emulator where it's at. Um, this is what the file name will look like. The boot ROM is mcxp underscore one dot zero. Maybe a little bit different for whatever you find. And then this one is going to be complex underscore and then a number dot bin. <clears throat> and once you tell the emulator where it's at, you can go on with everything else you're doing. Now, after that, you're going to, if, and you tell the emulator where your ROM is at, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. Now, and this is the most complicated portion believe it or not, of this process. So you're going to get a screen that looks like this. It says, please insert an Xbox disc. And what that means is it needs something to read. And what I have, I have um, Halo 2 right here. Um, I just downloaded it for, the, for this example today. And I also have the XISO program we talked about a few minutes ago. It's right there. And you don't run it um, like a normal executable. What you're going to do is you're going to extract Alrighty, Halo 2 is completely extracted and you're going to get something that looks like this. What, wherever you got it from um, this is what you're going to, it's going to look something like this. Um, now to use Extract XISO it's very important that at least to me you move it over um, to the same folder but also you rename it because what we're about to do you can't have any spaces in the file name and what I do is I change it to something very very simple so that you um, so that I can type it in quickly and not have to worry about it so I just it's Halo 2 so I just put H2 now, in order to make this work, you're going to, um, in the window where you have Extract XISO, you're going to hold Shift 
and right click. And down here, you're going to open up a PowerShell window. And it's going to look like this. And this is a Windows command line interface, uh, much like the terminal window in Linux or the command prompt. It works, if not exactly the same, then exactly similar, or excuse me, not exactly the same, then very similar. So what I have done is I have taken the two lines of, um, of text or the two text strings that you have to put in in order to make this work. You do them one at a time and it'll take your ISO file, which is this guy right here. It's an ISO file right now. You need to change it to an X ISO. And that's what this process is for. So these two text strings, um, we're going to, I, I've already used them multiple times. So I just want to show you guys what they look like. Okay. Now, what, and I, I'll explain this in just a second. <clears throat> but, so the first one, you need to, t it needs to say um, dot slash, uh, whether you call that backslash or forward slash doesn't really matter. But that's the command to run this, extract x iso dot exe. And then you're going to extract, and then you're going to put the file name here. So h2, because that's what we named this guy right here. And once you have this command put in with the file name in, you're going to hit enter. And it's going to go through uh, this process right here. And depending on the size of the game and depending on the hardware in your computer, this could take a little bit. Go get, you know, go grab a you know, bottle of water or something and it should be done by the time you get back. Okay, so now it's done. And what, um, what we're going to do now is do the second command. And the reason that you see me doing this is when you're, this is one game. If you have, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 games that you're doing, you want to um, have a, um, a quick way to do this. So once you do one, you have the command line in there and all you have to do is press up and go to the previous one, change the file name and, and go on about your merry little way. Um, I'll walk through that in just a second. So um, for this one, we did the first command up here, which was extract. That's what the dot X means, or excuse me, dash X. This one is dash C and compress. Oh, and before I get too far ahead of myself, it's already created an, another folder up here with an XBE file. And XBE basically means Xbox and it works in a different emulator but that emulator has a lot of bugs in it, so I don't like to use it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, take the take the file that's in here, and we're going to compress it, and it's going to come out with that name. So now that we have the command line written, hit enter, and we go through another process of well, a process of compressing. And again, this speed depends on the hardware in your computer and the size of the game that you're working with. All right, successfully created h2.iso, 81 files totaling, yada, yada, yada. All right, and now we're done. Um, I will get, I'll go to the next step in just a second, but I did tell you guys that I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that, all that was about with the command line. So you've already done one and I learned this to speed up this process. So if you, whatever the last command was, if you want to do it or change it or something, you just press the up arrow and it comes back. The one before that, you press the up arrow again. And ch just changing the, that small, those you know couple of characters that you put in for your file name, whatever it is, remember, it cannot have any spaces. But whatever your file name is, you put it in there, and then um, you just go to town on it. And as you guys can see, I have done a lot of these. So now we are done with PowerShell, so we can close that. Um, we can take this one 
and the original size of this file was about six or seven gigabytes. I don't remember exactly how much it was. So you can see how much smaller that this one is. But that one you don't need for um, Xemu, and which is the emulator that we're going to be using. And so we're going to take that, rename it. And then I am going to, oops. Move it there. And so what I, um, <clears throat> what I did to make it simple is I kept XISO in its own little folder so I can find it quickly if I find another Xbox game that I want to do this with. <clears throat> so we close that and then we can go to the folder where I have all of my Xbox emulators and then just move that guy right in there. It copies it, which I don't really like, but then I can go back and delete the one that's on the desktop. Now, once you get um, that part done, you can open up Xemu, machine, load disk. And it'll bring up your, um, it brought up the wrong uh, folder. So then um, we, we just did Halo 2. Click on that one, open, and then hit reset. And voila. I'll get a controller really quick. There we go. We got a, an, an emulated copy of Halo 2. Now, if you ever want to, I'll go through some of the other settings and everything for the emulator so that you guys can see how it works. Um, if you want to go back to um, just a black screen, you hit eject disk and it just says in, insert a disk and then you, you can load disk and you know pick whichever file, whichever game that you want that you have already gone through this process for. So we'll pick my personal favorite um, Xbox game, load it up, and <clears throat> you have some other settings up here. You can go completely full screen, which I like to do. Um, you can scale it to your monitor, or you can scale it to the original um, aspect ratio that it was um, the the game was made for. You have an internal the res resolution scale. And then a UI scale, and you also have um, debugging tools. Shows you the FPS, and as you can see right here, it's running at about 60 FPS. And audio. Turn that off. And then there is a, um, a help feature. Um, so that's this that's pretty much it it it's a lot more um it sounds more complicated than it is however there is one other thing that i would like to go over with you guys um before i end this video and i will probably i will probably be making an entire video on this process so if you have a steam deck all the Steam Deck users like me. Um, it. Other people said that it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was for me. It was rather difficult to get all of this to work on Steam Deck, so I found a workaround. 
<clears throat> and what I did, it, it's super simple. You take a flash drive, and if you're gonna put a lot of these um, games on one flash drive, so there's 34 games here, and it's almost 100 gigabytes. So just something to think about whenever um, you plan to do this. But if you want to move, if you want to, an easy way to do this for your Steam Deck, if you're already doing it on your PC, get a flash drive. I have a 16 gigabyte here, so I have to do this like five times. Um, and copy it onto the flash drive. I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it. For anybody who may not be um, well versed in how to do in how to do this, and that's fine. So, you take, what's the smallest one I have? Grab, just grab a couple of these. These are just all, um, just barely less than a gigabyte a piece. Okay, so take, cop, or uh, highlight them, and then copy them to your USB drive. And even, even um, these five games right here, it's uh, three gigabytes. So they're, they're fairly large as far as I know um, for the sixth generation and older consoles. Xbox is the, uh, has the largest games um, by far. I don't know why they're, um, they're double the size of PS2 game. The exact same game is double the size. I don't know, whatever. But um, yeah, it, it, it takes a while. But once you get done here, um, take the flash drive and um, if you are, once you get done here, take the flash drive and plug it into your Steam Deck, however that, whatever that looks like because there are some that have USB-C connectors on the end or if you have a, um, a dock for your Steam Deck, you can just plug it into the dock and it'll um, transfer the, you can transfer the files that way. But that's how you do it without having to go um, and mess with the terminal window because I know that that's fairly complicated. And um, then you're done. You just make sure that you put the, again, put the games, put the files where you can find them so you know where to tell the emulator to look because it doesn't automatically know. So that's going to do it for this video today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I will have some more emulation videos coming soon. And until next time, work hard, play hard, game hard. But above all else, be excellent to each other. Bye.